And so here's the last point as we kind of wrap up and make our way towards some closure here. When my life hasn't lived up to my expectation, my only hope is surrender. My only hope is surrender. See, God uses our disappointment to realign our loves and to reorder our lives. He uses our, our unmet expectations not to put a wedge in our relationship with Him, but to deepen our communion and our intimacy with Him. It is not a, uh, an accident that the conversation that Jesus has with Peter on the other side of that boat, on the other side of that fishing expedition has to do with love. You see, ultimately, that's what Jesus cared about. It was, it was Peter's heart. It was Peter's trust. Remember from the last session, we talked about trust being the biggest commodity. You cannot trust someone you do not love. And so you see how, how, how when Peter sits down with Jesus and you can sense Peter's fear, you can sense his guardedness, you can sense his desire. He wanted the right things. I think the hardest thing about unmet expectations and desires that are disappointed is that often we, they're not our bad desires that frustrate us, but it's our good desires that kick us in the gut. It's our good desires. Like, like if you're single, I would use that example again. You want to be married. That is a good desire. Maybe you're married and you want kids. That's a good desire. Maybe you're in ministry. Maybe it's your church related. It's a good desire. Peter had a good desire. He wanted to stand up for Jesus. But what we forget is that there's something greater than me being the center of my story, and it is Christ being the God of my story. And so when Jesus says those words after he confronts Peter and says, do you love me? Jesus knows Peter loves him. This wasn't a test for the Lord to see, oh, okay, Peter, you love me, that's good. No, Peter, Jesus knows it. It's for Peter to awaken to the depth of his love for the Lord. That encounter would change Peter, but not just change him. Christ would pour a second, God would pour a second chance on Peter. In the very next chapter, we see Peter preaching at Pentecost and 3,000 people giving their life to the Lord. But Jesus speaks some words that are so much at the heart of our disappointments. He says to them, truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you're old, you will stretch out your hands and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. That, in summary, is dependence. And in order to get to a place of dependence, we've got to surrender the thing that we think we need in order to make it. So surrender is finally admitting to Jesus that I love you more than anything else in the world. And that test of surrender will come up with will rear its head up in your life over and over again in the Christian life. And each time you say yes to God will take you a little closer to the Lord, a little deeper in love with Him. So if you're looking at your life right now with its brokenness and its disappointment, listen, there's hope. There's a Savior waiting for you on the other side of that shore inviting you into a deeper walk with him. Will you take him up on it? Will you say yes to God?